I'm somewhere in a secular forest, cedar forest, and today I'm uh, installing three antennas. I installed already one, and I have to install two more, but probably I'll end up installing one more, so two in total today. And I'll show you what I did, and this is not an advice uh, from a professional uh, wireless technician uh, I do this type of work for the last 20 something years but today I won't give you advices I'll show you how I've done it and uh, it's up to you if you want to take a couple of suggestions uh, my work or my contribution to the world is to help people with communications but also uh, I'm supposed to be a healer, <laughs> so it might sound weird, but anyway, I'll show you uh, the wireless side, uh, what I do for a living. So this is a mast, it's a 12 feet mast, it's a service entrance mast, uh, heavy duty galvan galvanized steel, and I'm in the process of installing it, and this is a trick I use. Uh, let's say if I install the clamps first, it's very difficult to push this one up unless I want to take it on the roof and slide it down. But uh, I want to push it up. So first I drill the hole with a hole saw, a nice 2.5 inches uh, or two and a half inches uh, diameter. And I'm going to install some clamps. Uh, then I have a specialty clamp that uh, require to go through this uh, wooden structure and that is give me some confidence that antenna will never slide down. Then I'll use uh, two more clamps with uh, those uh, black bolts. And in, in order to install this thing, I'm, uh, I'm using a trick, uh, as you can see here. Um, I have two ratcheting, ratcheting uh, kind of uh, ropes or uh, bungee cords, or I don't know how you call these things. Uh, it's difficult for me to do this thing with one hand. But anyway, so I lift one, then I have to release because... Uh, this one gets too thick here and I don't have the the right ones but this is a way to lift the pipe to the height without wrecking my back and I'll show you in the before I go on the roof to show you the other antenna I'll show you uh, how another guy installed a, a, a long mess 21 feet mess my my boss gave the job to someone else uh, for some reason and he installed it with uh, this tower type of stuff. I don't know, I don't know, but uh, what I see here, I see he forgot to tighten one of those U-clamps. As you can see, uh, the lock washer is not uh, squeezed properly. Like this ones here, they are, they are tight and uh this one here looks okay i would give it a half more turn or something so this looks okay but the way he chose the type of uh, brackets it's kind of weird i don't know how the heck uh he've done it but anyway so we'll go on the roof see how he done it so he cut a hole it's like a square hole let me go to my antenna Again, this is not an instructional video, so I'm going to be all over the place. This is uh, the first antenna I've done it today. And uh, as you can see, I drilled the hole. You see some silicone sticking out. This is not a uh, roof repair uh, caulking material. It's a flexible silicone uh, around the mast. It is not really necessary because uh, it's all outdoors here. Uh, then uh, I had to chew a bit on uh, that piece of wood, but at least it's, it's um, 
leaning against a piece of structural material which is solid and uh, you see this two inch and a half clamps I had to use a little bit of uh, specialty silicone in the holes so they won't get uh, rot and uh, it helps me when I tighten it it helps me it's kind of acting as a lubricant but once it dries it uh, seals the hole inside yeah, you don't have to do this type of stuff I'm just uh, uh, overkill here uh, same thing here then I came out with a coaxial cable and I'm going to seal this part here to prevent the insects to get in oh someone came in with the dogs and um, but I, I use a grommet to prevent the cable to get damaged right around here and the cable goes with the grounding goes to the radio room but let's go on the roof I could jump to the other antenna to to be annoying but this is uh, the first antenna I installed so I'll continue with this one I installed the flashing um, I'll show you the type uh, you can get it from Home Depot and again I use some silicone which is going to be a flexible insulation inside but here is a roof caulking material like a roof repair patch from, from Home Depot underneath and on top then I have some screws as you can see little screws that will hold this one in place and uh, this is a Sinclair antenna, UHF antenna. Uh, I made up these clamps. Uh, I don't like it, but uh, I had to use the other clamps to other two antennas that I have to install, like a Sinclair galvanized clamp. But for this uh, light duty, uh, it's okay. And I could not find bolts. I, I went to three stores to find zinc plated hex bolts and I could not find it. Anyway, so I'm not super proud about this one. And the joint waterproof, uh, waterproof uh, joint is inside. Two connectors, the antenna original connector which is an N male and an N female that is right inside sometimes I, I install it against the the mast but in this case I thought okay if if I can squeeze it inside uh, below the service cap that's good so that's kind of uh, what you see on the top let's go to the other guy and start. okay so uh, from here you see an UHF dipole okay that's the antenna I installed today. Um, it took me a few hours, uh, not because uh, uh, it takes that long, but I had to go outside the, this area to talk to my boss and my wife uh, because here is no signal. So since I'm working alone, <laughs> for my safety, I told them at noon, I'll drive to the signal area and I'll let you know that I'm uh, alive and safe. Now, of course, uh, wearing uh, safety equipment and attaching myself to the to the roof to a structure here. Anyway, now the tall, the big pipe. Someone else installed it, and I came here and I saw. Oh, he used the same type of flushing, but he he didn't finish the job. Like, uh, let's see what's underneath. So I see a big hole. He cut it with a. Kind of an electric saw. I've used um, I've used a round uh, saw saw, no hole saw. Wow. Um, to do a better, maybe a nicer job or something. And uh, again, like I said, I use some silicone around because the hole is tight. Now, if I want to seal this thing, ooh, I have to use some thick material. But I'm not going to install anything on this pipe. I'll ask my boss to talk to this guy to take it out because I don't like it. Uh, so it's not finished job. And oh, <laughs> look at that! Look at that! 
most likely is because of the U, U bolt or U clamp was not tight. But uh, no, I mean there is not going to be like uh, winds. Of, uh, oh, but the, the whole thing is moving. Oh, the whole roof. I'm, I'm now. I'm getting concern, concerned. <laughs> Yeah, if it's solid, if it's not moving, then the pipe at the top won't have that inertia. And it won't shake this, the whole roof structure. So you need to attach it properly. Anyway, so that's not my job and I'm not going to attach anything. I'm supposed to install two VHF antennas on this one. Now, uh, going back to, to this one, uh, this one is uh, going to be high, eh? like uh, another four feet or something, and I'll install a, UHF, uh, a VHF antenna this time, and I'll have enough clearance to clear the roof. But the signal is pretty strong. It's, uh, a it's supposed to connect to a repeater on the mountain, and um, I've tested with uh, one of these antennas. So we had two antennas installed by someone. Uh, I just provided the cables and the antennas before, so th those uh, were temporary. And with those antennas, I can hit the repeater, no problem. And uh, again, uh, see, I drilled a nice round hole, so, and now there's no clamp underneath. That's why it's moving. It's like uh, just on those uh, uh, ratcheting ropes and stuff. And um, yeah, I'll have a sen service entrance cap in a couple of minutes. Uh, once this one is all, all the way up, I'll have that type of service entrance flashing like I have a new one and I'll do the same type of job like the other antenna. And I have this caulking gun here with a roof repair material and some uh, tied up some uh, rubber tape for uh, sealing the connector. And the same thing, I'll, I'll install the cable, the VHF cable to an LMO 400 that goes through a service entrance cap inside that goes out. Uh, yeah, so I don't need to have a cable coming down the roof because th uh, this is a, um, a forest and it gets so much uh, snow in the winter, like probably one meter layer of snow here. And uh, when it starts freezing and uh, thawing and uh, you know, start sliding down that layer of snow is going to grab the cable because most likely it will freeze around the cable <laughs> and it's going to hang stuff on the cable uh, and I don't want that and it might pop the tie wraps if I... no, 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 it, 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 I go inside the service entrance mess and I come down underneath um, yeah, so that's kind of uh, uh, my job today and uh, yeah, maybe I'll post something else later related to healing, <laughs> because like I said, I'm not here to contribute as a radio tech or a wireless technician only. This is the stuff I love to do, but this is not my main purpose in life. Yep, so I'm here in the forest, relaxing. Uh, earlier I had some classical music from the Seattle. Uh, and life is good. There's a river down there, waterfall behind me, air is clean. Ah, it was cold in the morning and life is perfect. See you later, bye bye.